What I'm going to show here is the difference between a average, moving average, and exponential smoothing forecast to predict the sixth quarter of this graph. We don't know what the actual is for six, but we can forecast it. What is that forecast going to be? Now with a simple average, you simply take the numbers of the actual, which is AT, actual at period one, actual at period two, period three. That's what that T denotes. Quarter one through six, we don't know quarter six. And then I simply graphed the quarters on the horizontal axis and the actuals on the vertical axis. As you can see, the graph looks similar to this. It's very sporadic. There's no real rhyme or reason to what the next one should be. So our first take at it will be, let's take the average of the five quarters that we do know. So the average is simply the actuals divided by the number of periods. So it would be 10 plus 11 plus 18, 14, and 15 divided by 5. So that equals 68 divided by 5, which amounts to 13.6. 13.6. So that's using a simple average. We took all of our data and divided by the amount of periods or data elements we have, 13.6. So that would be our prediction for quarter six using a simple average. Now a moving average is you take a set amount of periods and we simply take the average of those periods. Um, for example, we already have the actual fourth quarter data, but if we didn't, we, would take, we could take the simple average of um, the three quarters prior, take the average, and that would be our prediction for, four, for a fourth quarter. Then the next quarter, we would take quarters two, three, and four, because then we'll have actual numbers for, for the uh, fourth quarter, two, three, and four. Take the average of that to predict the fifth quarter, and so on and so on. So using that method, if you took a three-period average, we, the, you take the least of the previous three periods, three, four, and five, to predict the six. Now you could arbitrarily make this four or five periods. It just depends on what you want to do with this data and how relevant the newer data is compared to the old data. So let's take a three-quarter moving average to find the sixth. So the average moving, we'll put a little three there too, just so we know, moving three quarters, is equal to the previous three, which is going to be 18 plus 14 plus 15 divided by three which equals 47 divided by 3, which is 15.66, so about 15.7. So the moving average is 15.7. The actual average of all data is 13.6. Now which prediction do you want to use? The question is, how relevant is the latest data compared to the prior data. Maybe you're doing sales volume and at quarter one you're selling 10% of your inventory. Quarter two you learned a little bit, you sold a little bit more. Quarter three was uh, a really happening, you had everything going on and you sold 18% of your inventory. Whatever the case may be, you've got to decide how relevant is your new data versus the old data. Now there's one other forecast method that I want to bring up, it's called it's called exponential smoothing, and there's various techniques for finding this out and different ways to do it. Uh, we're going to do a really crude, quick example where the it's not very difficult. It is a little time consuming by hand. So the definition of exponential smoothing in this example, I'm going to give you a formula, and it's simply the forecasted at time at period t is going to be equal to the forecasted at t minus 1, which is the period before t, plus alpha, that's a Greek letter alpha, times 
a to the t minus 1, which is actual, minus f of t minus 1. Okay, and what that means is to find the forecast for a certain period, we want period 6. So we would do forecast of period 6 is equal to the t minus 1, that means period 5. What is the forecasted at 5? Well, we don't know. Plus the alpha, what is alpha? Alpha is a, it's called a, it's called a smoothing constant. And what it is, is <clears throat> there's various ways to choose a constant, but in general, the more stable your data is, the more linear this data looks, and there's nothing going crazy, the lower the number between zero and one. So if it's a stable graph, it'd be like a point 0.1. If the noise is sporadic and the data is just everywhere, you'd want something like a point 0.8 or point 0.9. Now this is, I would say, mostly not sporadic except for that one outlier. So we'll go ahead and use a point 0.5 alpha. Now that's completely arbitrary as well. All that alpha does, it puts weight on the newer data versus the older data. Typically, the higher the number, of your alpha between 0 and 0.1. So if alpha equals 0 to 1, you want to choose a good alpha. So exponential smoothing. We can't figure out the fifth, the sixth forecast without knowing the fifth. Well, we can't figure out the fifth without knowing the fourth, and so on and so on. So really, with exponential smoothing, you're going to need to figure out forecast 2 through 6. So forecast in the second quarter is equal to the forecast of the first quarter. Now I filled that in as 10%. It's 10% because we don't really have a forecast for the first quarter. Uh, whatever the actual was, we will forecast it because there's no previous data to go by. So, the forecast for the first quarter is 10%. Plus, our alpha was point, we're going to use 0.5 times t, actual t minus 1. So, t is 2, don't forget, I'm, I'm looking at the second quarter. So, t minus 1 would be the first quarter actual, 10%, minus the forecasted t minus 1, which is 10% as well, which that's going to equal 10 minus 10 is 0 times 0.5 is 0, so that equals 10. So we're going to forecast, using exponential smoothing, 10% for the second quarter. Now we know we actually got 11%, but we're doing this forecast model to come up with a better or a different way to analyze that sixth quarter. So what is the third quarter going to be? Well, we're going to take the quarter before its forecast, which was 10%. See the formula here, t minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. Second quarter forecast is equal to 10. Plus our alpha constant, smoothing constant, times actual 3 minus 1 is 2. So the actual second quarter was 11%. So we've got 11% minus forecasted t minus 1, which was 10%. 11 minus 10 is 1 times 0.5 is 0.5 plus 10 is 10.5. 10.5. Let's do the next one. The fourth quarter forecast based on our previous data, which is, so we have 14.25. That's pretty close to the actual. So let's go on and get number and five. Get a solid 13 forecast. So our forecast for the fifth quarter is 13. So now we can finally forecast our sixth quarter like we wanted to. So the sixth quarter forecast is equal to the forecasted fifth quarter, which was 13, plus smooth and constant times actual fifth quarter was 15, subtract 
forecasted fifth quarter, which was 13. 15 minus 13 is 2 would be 1 plus 13 equals 14. So there we have it. Our sixth quarter forecast is 14 in that example.